What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the photography channel where somehow the host seems to have some sort of innate inability to take photos. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most, if not the most, popular portrait film stock in existence, Portra. Specifically my first time shooting Portra 160 last week. So sit back, grab a drink, and get ready to be underwhelmed. Let's get started. So Portra as a film stock has been around since about 1998 and it was released by Kodak mostly to cover the wedding and portrait photography niche that needed an updated film stock that could be scanned more easily. Because of its designation as a portrait and a wedding photography film stock and because of its launch in the late 1990s, it has a couple of things going for it. One is it's got probably the most accurate skin tones of any film stock out there. I mean, there's a reason you see every portrait photographer and their mom talking about portrait. Portra. Portra is beautiful for portraits. It's got the skin tones absolutely nailed down flat. It's warm, but it's not too warm. And if you're shooting 160 like I was, the film grain is incredibly fine. It's a C41 film stock as well. So in case you develop your own photos and that's something that's relevant to you, there you go. So for my first time shooting Portra 160, my buddy Glenn and I decided to head to downtown Salt Lake and just park on the street and roam around. It's been pretty empty down there recently, so parking is pretty easy to find, and there aren't too many people to deal with, so you basically just have free roam downtown. Don't take this as me encouraging you to go out if you're not supposed to go out, and please be responsible if you do go out. I know we're in a bit of a weird circumstance with everything that's going on recently, um, so I've been trying to still get out and take photos as much as possible, but also try to be as responsible about it as I possibly can. I've been trying to stay away from people if there is anyone nearby, and I've been trying to stay away from places that can't help but being medium to high traffic areas regardless of the current situation. So now that that's been said, uh, it was a beautiful and sunny day outside. Clouds were few and far between. So as soon as we got downtown and we started looking around, I was seeing potential for shots left and right. With this Portra 160, these are exactly the conditions you're looking for. This particular film stock, especially Portra 160, more than Portra 400 or Portra 800, is made more or less for studio lighting. At least that's how Kodak branded it and that's how Kodak marketed it. So it does require quite a bit of light. Although I have heard from people that you can shoot it earlier in the morning or later in the evening, but it's certainly not one of those film stocks that's going to be as versatile as something either with a higher ISO or other brands that make more versatile color stocks. It was really weird to be walking around in some of these places that typically have a ton of people walking through them and to kind of just have free reign as a photographer and, and be able to snap a picture from whatever angle you want, whenever you want, without anything really interrupting your frame. I mean, traffic was light, but pedestrian traffic was basically non-existent. So it was really a great day for architecture and just general non-person street photography. After just kind of shooting around on the street for a little while, we decided to try to get on top of one of the roofs of the parking structures that surrounded us. We happened to be close to a mall, the mall was closed, the parking structures were pretty empty, so we figured we'd try to get inside of one, sneak in there, and find a way up to the top to get some more shots up there. We failed. Well, okay, we only failed the first time. The second one we found, we were able to kind of just sneak in through the back way and we found an elevator that took us up to the top floor. Well, not exactly the top floor either, even though we did succeed in getting in and we got in the elevator and, and it took us up, it only took us to the second to the top floor because the top floor was somehow still an office even though it seemed like the whole thing was a parking structure. I don't really know exactly how it happened. All I know is that we didn't end up on the top top, but we ended up pretty high up in the air. It was a little bit scary when we were in the elevator on the way up. We heard voices up at the top and we thought that it would be someone official. When we got up there, it was just a bunch of skateboarders. I asked actually to snap a pic of one of them. So I got a portrait of one of them. Looking back on it, I am absolutely pissed at myself for taking a portrait of this skateboarder without his skateboard. 
And some of these photos where I was shooting into some pretty serious shadows or I was shooting in shadows, into sun, uh, I definitely started to notice what people are talking about when they say that this is not a very contrasty film stock, uh, which played really to my advantage in these circumstances where I wouldn't have been able to get a lot of the detail that I got out of these photos if I was using something like an Ektar 100 that has a lot more contrast. This particular film stock really just kind of evened everything out, brought those shadows up and gave me a lot more detail to work with. I personally can see why this film stock was designed for scanning. It's, it really is almost like the log profile like the C log of film stock. It's insane how much detail you can bring back in post when you scan in shots with Portra, especially Portra 160. While we're on that topic, I do have to say there's one other cool thing about this video that you probably have not noticed because I have not told you neither in the past nor in the present, but this is the first video where my scans have been done in my house by myself. Previously, all of the scans that I've showed on these videos have been scans that were done by the lab that develops my film. These scans were actually done by me in my house on my new Epson V600. Uh, well, new to me, obviously not new. This scanner is like nearly a decade old, but it works great. And I will definitely be making a video or maybe a few videos soon about things that I've learned already in using the V600 and why I think that you should be scanning at home versus scanning through a lab. Well, after we had our fun on the roof, we got down, I saw a really cool Toyota, snapped a couple of pictures of that. We grabbed some pizza and we basically called it a day after that. So. Hopefully this video isn't too short, but I had a lot of fun shooting with Portra 160. I would absolutely recommend this film stock to anyone who loves the more pastel colors that Portra provides and is looking for a film stock that they can shoot midday, no problem, no highlight blowouts, still preserve all the shadows. This is absolutely one of those film stocks that you just think to yourself like, wow, I, I guess I did well. I really don't know what I did differently. And truth be told, uh, this film stock does a lot of work for you. So obviously, if you're looking for a film stock for beautiful portraits or beautiful wedding photos, th there's really not many other film stocks that are gonna even hold a candle to Portra. But even if you're just looking for that kind of more muted pastel look with colors that are gorgeous and deep and rich, but they're not overwhelming, they're not ridiculously blown out and overly contrasty, then Portra is absolutely the film stock for you. I've seen a ton of digital photographers who are editing their photos to look very similar to this film stock. There is definitely a market of people out there. There is definitely a sect of people out there who love this look, regardless of whether it's coming out of a digital camera or it's coming out of a film camera. And if you haven't shot on it yet, I absolutely recommend you do. It's one of my favorite film stocks that I have ever shot. I really enjoyed shooting this Portra 160 for the first time. Portra 400 is just about my go-to for almost every circumstance. Portra 800, again, another ridiculously amazing film stock. And the grain, even on the 800, is not absurdly noticeable. So yeah, I mean, really, I guess I just can't recommend it enough. If you haven't shot on Portra, you gotta try it. You gotta try it at least once. Maybe you'll be right back to Ektar. Maybe you'll be right back to Ektachrome. Who shoots Ektachrome regularly, but has never shot Portra? That would be kind of weird. I guess it's possible. I'm sure there's people out there that have done that. I'm not, no judgment here. This is a no judgment channel, which by the way, if you like this video, you should like it. You should subscribe for more content. New videos are coming out every other day. Remember, every other day. Uh, I'm hoping that this video is going to be on schedule and that the next video is going to be on schedule as well. I'm planning a trip that I'm leaving for tomorrow. I'm shooting this A-roll right now and I'm editing this together on Saturday night so that I can schedule it to be posted on Monday so that we stay on schedule and so that when I get back on Tuesday from my trip, I can edit together another video on Tuesday night and have a fresh upload for you on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Look out for those uploads every other day at 2 p.m. We'll see you next time on the channel. Thanks for checking in and have a great day, guys.